Hello, Hildron here from the CC, here today to tell you about the differences between 32-bit and 64-bit. This is my third video on this subject, the other two were pretty successful, but I thought a third revision would be nice to provide some more information and answer some more questions, because I have a lot of curious viewers that have asked a lot of questions about this topic. So I'm going to get into the basics and some more advanced information about 32 and 64-bit. We're going to start with the support for RAM. RAM is random access memory, and you'll find it in any computer. It helps your computer keep more applications running at once, and it can store data faster than a hard disk. Well, typically, when you have RAM in a computer, you have maybe 4 gigabytes minimum now, and that's with a 64-bit system. But with older computers, if you have more RAM than about 3.25 gigabytes, and you have a 32-bit system, that would be a problem. 32-bit software has a 3.25 gigabyte limit on random access memory. So once the gigabytes in the data gets up to that size, it will have to start to delete other data from the random access memory, therefore making certain things run slower. And we'll get into why that happens in a bit. However, with 64-bit software, you have pretty much unlimited RAM because the limit is 16 exabytes. That is approximately 17.1 billion gigabytes of RAM. Now that's a theoretical amount, of course. I'm not sure if any supercomputer even has this much RAM, but the only thing that's really important to know is that the full potential of 64-bit RAM support is 16 exabytes. Now RAM is important because it can send and receive data faster than a hard disk. Your RAM doesn't store information, but it stores it temporarily. Every time your computer is turned off, it's wiped out. It's not a storage device like your hard drive. Your hard drive holds all the files on your computer. And when you open up programs, it reads the information off the disk, but it stores other information in the RAM, because the more RAM that is available, the more information a program can store and read for quick access. Because once again, RAM can read and write data way faster than a hard drive can. So that is why having more RAM is important, and it doesn't matter how much RAM you have over 4 gigabytes if you're on a 32-bit system, because you'll be restricted to 3.25 gigabytes. It's important to know that if you want to have over 3.25 gigabytes of RAM, you should have a 64-bit system, which means a 64-bit processor and a 64-bit operating system. We'll get more into that in a bit. So speed is important with 64-bit. Helping the computer run faster with more RAM is important too, but it can also do computation up to two times as fast compared to 32-bit. So that's why apps like Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere Pro, big video editors, when they move to 64-bit, which they already have, it's really nice because you can work with larger projects, you can render things a lot faster. That is why 64-bit is really nice for bigger applications. Now with 32-bit, there is actually a way you can get more RAM registered in the system. You can have a 32-bit processor, but if your 32-bit processor has something called a physical address extension, you can eliminate that 3.25 gigabyte RAM cap. So you'll still only have 32-bit speed, but you can actually have more than 3.25 gigabytes of RAM with a PAE. Now types of processors there are. Here are the basic ones here. If you see something that says x86, that refers to 32-bit instructions. If you see it say x86-64, that typically refers to 64-bit instructions. And if you see AMD 64 or Intel 64, that refers to 64-bit specifically with those CPUs. So if you're wondering if you have a 64-bit processor, just look up your processor type and it'll either tell you directly that it's 32-bit or 64-bit, or it will say something like this. For example, if it says AMD 64, you're good to go. You have a 64-bit processor. So if you've got an older computer and you're not too sure, just keep an eye out for words like these, and then you'll know what it is. Another example, if you're a Mac user, it's a little bit easier to tell if you have a 64-bit computer because I believe most machines after 2006 were 64-bit, but you can still check the processor and see. So any Mac with an Intel Core 2 Duo or higher is 64-bit. An example would be like the Mac Pro with the Intel Xeon, or an iMac with a Core i7 or a Core i5. Those are all 64-bit processors. In addition, if you actually have one of the higher-end Macs from the older days in the PowerPC era, a PowerPC G5 processor is 64-bit as well. But those aren't really used anymore, it's all Intel. Okay, so for the operating system, if you're on a Mac, if you have OS 10.5 or higher, that has 64-bit app support. 
On Windows, you just need to make sure you have any 64-bit version of Windows installed. Some older programs do have a problem running on 64-bit, but that's usually for older software. Newer programs usually don't have that problem. You can run 64-bit and 32-bit without conflicts thanks to modern technology. So just to sum up the advantages of 64-bit, the two big things are virtually unlimited RAM support, so you get to shove a bunch of RAM into your system. But remember, not all systems can support that much RAM, obviously. Some can't even support a mere 16. It depends on your motherboard as well, because some older computers that are 64-bit may only support 4 gigs of RAM. Some, like my computer, may only support 16, and 16's a lot, don't get me wrong. But make sure your motherboard can actually hold that much RAM. So there's a couple more factors to consider. So that's one pro, and the other big pro here is faster computation. So overall, it just makes things faster by allowing more RAM and faster computation. So next time you're wondering what's the difference between these two, you now know those pretty basic differences, and you know the advantages about 64-bit and how it is better than 32-bit when it comes to speed. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, just let me know below and I'll see if I can help you out. So thank you for tuning into this, and I'll see you later.